Okay, let's continue then. Uh, last, last time we did the review of the electromagnetic spectrum. We got an overview and a sense of what the electromagnetic spectrum meant. Uh, so now we continue. Uh, we should be finishing lecture five today and also starting lecture six, which is on telescopes. Um, so the next topic is how these electromagnetic waves are absorbed in our atmosphere. Our atmosphere helps to protect us from these some of these uh, dangerous electromagnetic waves. So it says here the carbon dioxide, the CO2, and also the water vapor in our atmosphere, which basically means the H2O water, which uh, eventually goes up to the atmosphere and makes clouds and stuff like that, the water vapor. They absorb some of the infrared and radio waves. That means they do not make it all the way down to the surface of the Earth. Therefore, we do not have to put radio telescopes or infrared telescopes in outer space. Since they only absorb <coughs> some of them, that means if we design the radio telescope, for the most part, we do not have to put that telescope in outer space. S uh, same thing with infrared. We can visualize this paragraph with this uh, picture here. So this one is showing you how far each of these waves penetrates, how deep into our atmosphere they penetrate. So if uh, the first paragraph is talking about the infrared and the radio waves. So if you see here where the UHF, VHF, FM waves, these waves come and they penetrate all the way to the surface. The really long radio waves, such as AM, they actually get absorbed in the atmosphere. So they come and they do not make it all the way down to the surface. So if we wanted to design a telescope that was viewing in the AM range, that one we do have to send it to outer space, okay? Be or at least send it out to the atmosphere somewhere here in the atmosphere. But the other region of the radio, we can keep it here on the ground. Then when you go to microwave infrared, they, they, uh, they come down and then they stop somewhere about here. They are absorbed by the atmosphere. What in the atmosphere? The carbon dioxide and the water vapor. The infrared goes all the way. Some of it makes it all, all the way down here. This part of the infrared, the one that's close to the visual, it makes it all the way down to the ground. So depending on which part of the infrared we're trying to uh, picture, if we're trying to do this part of the infrared, which is close to the visible, then we can keep the uh, satellite here on the ground. If we want to do this part of the infrared, then we have to send it to at least somewhere in the atmosphere, in the mid-range atmosphere, OK? <coughs> of course, the visual uh, part of the spectrum makes it all the way through. Otherwise, of course, you wouldn't be able to see the stars, right? So our atmosphere's properties and the ways that our eyes have evolved are such that we can see the stars and the visible range makes it all the way down to the surface. And that's what enables us to see the stars, you see. The oxygen in the uh, atmosphere and the ozone layer, these two working together. So ozone layer is a particular molecule known as O3, three oxygens bonded together. And oxygen is the oxygen we breathe, it's O2. They help to absorb all of the gamma rays, x-rays, and most of the ultraviolet from the hitting the Earth's surface. In terms of telescope, what does that mean? Therefore, we have to launch these kind of telescopes to outer space if we want to observe the sky, okay? I.e., for example, such as the Hubble Space Telescope. <coughs> so let's see what this means here. Um, gamma ray is the most dangerous waves. Of course, we would like them to be absorbed. And fortunately for us, they are absorbed. Look how far they make it. They make it down here, they stop. What absorbs them? Oxygen and the ozone layer. We need the ozone layer, okay? That's why uh, back in the 90s and stuff, there was a scare. You might have heard about it. They said, oh, there's a hole in the ozone layer above some countries, you know. 
And then uh, we found out about it. We started taking actions, how to close that hole, how to stop releasing dangerous uh, gases into the atmosphere. That hole is actually starting to close, okay? Or uh, about to close, you know? So things like that, we have to always monitor, make sure the ozone layer is safe uh, and sound because the, it really helps us protect from the gamma rays. On also the x-rays, watch. They come, they stop here, you see? Ultraviolet, well, it comes and stops here, but the part of the ultraviolet close to the visual, this part, you see? It makes it all the way down. So if we, if this is the visual, imagine this is the visual, and we draw a straight line down, you see this is the visual, this part of the ultraviolet, very thin part, part of the ultraviolet that's close to the violet, Remember uh, the Roy G. Biv, violet? After violet comes ultraviolet. So the ultraviolet makes it all the way through. Of course, without the ultraviolet, you wouldn't be able to get a tan by hanging out at the beach, you know? So part of the ultraviolet does make it through. Is that a good thing? Well, without it, you wouldn't get a tan, but don't be overexposed to ultraviolet, you know? There's be control it. <coughs> so as you see here, infrared makes it kind of Part of the infrared might make it all the way down, but most of the infrared is stuck right about here. You see? So the infrared is more or less stuck up there. The radio wave makes it all the way through. This is called a radio window, okay? And then most of the gamma ray x-ray, and then most of the UV is uh, stopped right there. But then there is a little part of the UV that makes it through, you see? <coughs> Another way to visualize this picture is uh, this, this one here. Same thing, but a different way of visualizing this. So you see here, it says, the ozone and the ordinary oxygen in the atmosphere block completely. Which region? The X-ray, the ultraviolet. This region is almost completely blocked. A little bit of the ultraviolet makes it through. So you see ultraviolet radiation absorbed by ozone in the upper atmosphere. You see here's the ozone layer. It's absorbed right there. Visible makes it all the way through. So in terms of telescope, what does that mean? This uh, optical telescope that are intended for visible region, you can keep it here on Earth. You don't have to send it to outer space. Um, then in the infrared region, it's kind of jaggedy. It goes down, some of it goes down, some of it stops up there, some of it goes down, you know, so it depends. There's a little bit of an infrared window. It goes all the way down here. So we can actually, if we wanted to, we can take a telescope up to this part of the atmosphere and we can still view the sky in the infrared. We don't have to go all the way out to the solar system, okay? So that's the infrared window, it's called. If I make this bigger, you can see. Infrared window. Then over here in this region, water and carbon dioxide in atmosphere completely block. That's the infrared, this region of the infrared. And then you get to radio wave. Radio wave makes it through but extreme upper large wavelength, electric charges in the upper atmosphere block completely, okay? So not all radio waves make it through. So infrared mostly absorbed by water, vapor, and carbon dioxide, and then radio waves make it through. So radio telescopes, for the most part, we keep it here on Earth. Optical telescope, we keep it here on Earth. Most of the other telescopes, we at least send it to the upper atmosphere or we send it completely to the outer space, okay? So we're gonna learn about those telescopes in the next lecture. So this is a good thing that our atmosphere does. Besides helping us to breathe, it absorbs these dangerous waves, particularly these ones. You see, these ones are dangerous, X-ray, gamma ray. One of the things that we have to worry about if we ever try to colonize the moon or Mars is not just getting oxygen there, but also getting enough of an atmosphere to absorb these rays, because these are dangerous waves. You don't want to be living 
if you're not, if the atmosphere is not absorbing them. Like, in, for example, in Mars, the atmosphere is too thin. It, there's not enough of an atmosphere. So not only we got to get oxygen there, we got to get plenty of it. We got to get nitrogen. We got to get enough of the, uh, the atmosphere to help us absorb these so that we could live, you see. So that's an important thing.